in the wake of the hysteria created by the coronavirus, I have been holding my breath and uh, <laughs> keeping my calm the whole time. A lot of people have been saying, oh, Joe, you better do something on coronavirus. And I've just been laughing because I remember that several years ago within my city and even beyond my city in the, city of Mar uh, in the state of Maryland, U.S., I remember that I went around and I was telling people there was gonna, that there would be a scenario where people are going to be on lockdown like this and not allowed to step out of their homes and there will even be deaths on the street and I even told some of my African brothers and sisters that most of them may have a problem even getting on the plane to come home if they wanted to and everybody said, oh Joseph, you are such a conspiracy theorist. People called me nuts and called me crazy and all kinds of stuff. Ten years down the line, people are calling me from all over. Joe, that thing you said, it's happening. Oh my gosh, you saw it, you saw it. I wasn't even prophesying. I was just telling them based on research that I had carried out. A lot of us in this world don't react unless something goes fundamentally wrong. Just like when the thing hits you like a buck in the head. That's when many of us wake up. Coronavirus, look at the hysteria. We have poverty today in the world. It has killed way more than even Ebola, SARS, Corona could ever kill in a thousand lifetimes. I have never seen this level of hysteria around poverty and its ravaging effect in Africa and so many other places. Obesity, disinformation, all these things have been killing. No hysteria. Why Corona? And this is not to play down on the impact or the effects of the coronavirus. I mean, it's only a madman who would not, who would deny the effect of the coronavirus, which we can all see every day, how much it's killing and how fast it's spreading. Only a madman. So I'm not playing down on the effects of corona. But why the hysteria? I always want to ask why. It's almost like a shutdown of all human activities as we know it. Whole cities are under quarantine, whole nations are under quarantine. Borders are being shut down, social distancing is being promoted. People are being told they're going to go on the mandatory vaccination like one of these countries in Europe has just said. Mandatory vaccination, why must I be mandatorily vaccinated? Why? What is in the vaccine? Don't I have the right anymore to say no, I don't want it? You see, when things like this happen, you lose your rights because the system of the Antichrist, which is what you call the New World Order, means that you have to relinquish all of your rights. And that's exactly what is playing out right now. You don't have rights anymore because in the Illuminati, they have something they call the problem reaction solution. I've talked about it in so many of my videos if you followed me long enough. Illuminati will go and use a proxy to create a problem, manufacture a problem actually. Man-made problem. They use a proxy or they will do it from behind the scene and then they will sit back and allow the people react to it hysterically. People are losing their mind, losing their cool. Oh my gosh, we're about to die. That's reaction. And then they already had a solution in place, a solution for that problem which they created, but they know that if they introduce that solution to you under normal circumstances, you will stone them to death. So what they will do is that they just let you react to the problem they've created and make you cry out for the solution, which is also going to be a solution that will ensure your rights are taken away. And so when you react that way, they will not bring that solution by force to you. You are begging for that solution now, something that ordinarily you would never have loved for them to give to you. Problem, coronavirus, reaction, hysteria, shutdown, border shutdown, social distancing, and then solution, mandatory vaccination. That's exactly what is going on right now. When things like this happen, for those of us who still think like humans, the first thing that comes to mind is Revelation chapter 13. The new world order, the Antichrist system. The Antichrist is going to rule the world. 
with one word religion and one word government. And so there's a guy called Anthony Lewandowski. Anthony Lewandowski came up with something he calls the Church of Artificial Intelligence. And he created a church of artificial intelligence. Can you imagine that? You know, I've told you people several times in my videos that the future of our world is AI, artificial intelligence. The Antichrist is going to rule this world. He's going to use artificial intelligence to rule the world. And you can see what these people are doing right now. <laughs> you see what they're doing? They are telling everybody to go home and work from home. They are telling people who want to do conference, the international conference abroad, have your own web conference. Everything is now web-based. Everything is web-based. Everything is now done through the internet, which is what? AI. So now they have finally brought you to a point where you are meant to disconnect from other human beings. Have very little to no interaction with your fellow human beings, which is what they promote as social distancing. And then they make you become addicted to your new God, which is artificial intelligence, especially now that 5G is about to be launched. So all the things you couldn't do before, you can easily do now. You can attend meetings abroad from your home. AI becomes your God. Data becomes the breath of your life. You have just changed overnight without knowing it. And it's not going to change anytime soon. So you can see how many companies have told their workers to work from home now. You see how they have herded everybody like a sheep going to the slaughter. The people, years ago when we used to scream about this, the people would tell us, it is not possible, Joe. How can you just control entire population like that? How can you get everybody on lockdown and get them to do this and do that? Oh, well, we have mandatory vaccination going on in Europe. One guy said I had to run away from UK because I know mandatory vaccination is coming to UK soon. And I told my people that would come 10 years ago. You say, no, it was not possible. It's happening before our eyes. And when they have made you to become so used to AI, artificial intelligence, and then, my God, you want to go to worship God, you worship through the internet. You want to go for shopping, you shop through the internet. You want to watch a movie, that's why Netflix is so big now. Going to the cinema, you can't compare anything. Netflix is the big, everything is online now. So they want to now consolidate it and make it a way of life for you. Now, what is the end result of that? When they have done this, you know you can now shop online, do everything online with little to no interaction with anybody out there. The time is going to come when they will let you know. You see, all this you're shopping online because now pretty much everything you do is online and you have to use your card. They said that card has issues. We need to change the card. And from changing the card now, we need to get something more efficient because now you know you don't have any other option because the only option you have is online. If they tell you that you have to get a microchip, which is actually the mark of the beast, that you have to get a microchip to be able to shop online or do other things, you will not hesitate to take it because you don't even have any option of going to do anything outside because they would have already conditioned all of humanity to do everything online. Data is your breath now. That's why the Bible says without the mind, you can't buy or sell anything because your buying and selling now happens from the comfort of your home in front of your computer. Let's read what Lewandowski talked about the God. He said there's an AI God in his AI church. Artificial intelligence church has a God which is also AI. And this is how he described this God. He calls that God whatever. Here he says, with the internet as its nervous system, the world's connected cell phones and sensors as its sense organs, and data centers as its brain, data centers as its brain, the whatever, which is the God, will hear everything, see everything, and be everywhere at all times. The only rational word to describe that whatever, thinks Lewandowski, is God. Written here, 
And the only way to influence a deity is through prayer and worship. He just described what the Antichrist is going to look like for us. The documents state that Way of the Future's activities will focus on the realization, acceptance, and worship of a Godhead based on artificial intelligence developed through computer hardware and software. Yeah, um, uh, you've expressed your reservations about AI and your views about that. Yeah, I just think it's, the singularity is probably the right word because we just don't know what's going to happen um, once uh, there's intelligence substantially greater than that of a human brain. The primitive forms of artificial intelligence we already have have proved very useful, but I think the development of full artificial intelligence could spell the end of the human race. In, in ancient times, land was the most important asset in the economy, so politics was the struggle to control land. In the last 200 years, machines replaced land as the most important economic asset. So politics became the struggle to control the machines. And now data is replacing machines as the most important asset. So politics is really a struggle about who owns and who controls the flows of data in the world. Government fought to have control over land in the past. Later, they began to fight to have control over machines. Now, the governments are fighting to have control over data. And that's why China came out with 5G and America had a problem with it. Why should they come first with it? And that's why they began to frustrate the efforts of Huawei. Nations are now fighting to control data because data is going to be the source of everything you do in the end time. That's why you see them telling everybody you have to work from home. They are conditioning you. They are conditioning you. A lot of things are going to happen and things will never be the same again. If you're a rational thinking person by now, you will know that the system of the Antichrist is now about to be launched. But is it just enough to say that? Can I prove it further to you that the system of the Antichrist is about to be launched in our world? And I'm going to connect this to our man, Donald Trump. Okay, so on recently, Pope Francis, the man you know who has been on a mission to unite all the religions of the world. <laughs> I mean, he does not make any apologies for it. He does not hide it. He does not miss words. The guy wants every religion in the world to unite to the point he even told Christians that proselytizing is bad. That means that Christians should stop going out to preach to or people of other religions to convert them into Christianity. That that is wrong. It is a sin. Pope Francis said that live. Said he would never do that. Why would you convert? And you know why he said that? Because the man believes that all the religions are good and they are the same and they all worship the same God. That's why he has been fighting to bring every single religion that has a name in this world under one umbrella. What did the Bible say about that in Revelation chapter 13? He calls it the one world religion. Are we close to one world religion being activated officially in our world? Yes. Let me prove it to you. Some things happened this week that we think should really capture the attention uh, of most people, especially Protestants. I don't know if you're aware of what the Pope did on Thursday, September 12, but he had an, a special video where he is now setting up a date to establish a global pact with the leaders of the world to re-educate the young people of the world. Uh, this was also presented by the Vatican in uh, written form as well as the Pope himself reading it uh, on a video and the date is May 14, 2020. Dobbiamo puntare sulla educazione che apre la mente e i cuori ad una comprensione più larga e più profonda della realtà. Serve un patto educativo globale. We need a global compact on education. The world needs to be re-educated and we need the leaders of the world to come together and sign this compact. And a compact, of course, is a firm contract, promise, treaty, or an agreement. Che ci educhi alla solidarietà universale a un nuovo umanesimo. Per questo ho promosso un evento mondiale. So he says we're going to promote this global event 
that is going to create a new universal solidarity. Now, that solidarity means a new unity, and that's been his mantra through his papacy, and a new humanism. He talks about, you wonder, what does a new humanism mean? Uh, usually, churches are reluctant to talk about humanistic uh, point of view because Christians do not have the humanistic point of view. We've got the Christian worldview. What is humanism all about? It is a deviation from divinity. That's what they want to do to re-educate the children of the world, just like Planned Parenthood has been re-educating our children on comprehensive sexuality education, telling babies as young as four, five, six, seven that masturbation is good, that it's okay to fall in love with somebody of the same gender. Somebody who is a woman can actually become a male, and a male can actually become a woman that is normal. These are the new normals. Un proverbio africano recita que para educar un bambino serve un intero villaggio. Ma dobbiamo costruirlo questo villaggio. And then he quotes from a uh, familiar proverb that it takes a village to raise a child. Uh, that was used uh, by Hillary Clinton, both prior and during her campaign. And it sounds beautiful because the word village is not like city, it's not like nation or country or some political power. It's, it's kind of homey. So he's saying that we need to, you know, the world, we need to look upon the world as a village. We need to come together as the village leaders and train the children of the village. And of course, he's talking about programming the children of the world is what this is dealing with. Que dobbiamo modificare il terreno delle discriminazioni come ho sostenuto nel documento che ho recentemente sottoscritto col grande imam di Al-Azhar ad Abu Dhabi. All right, now, I don't know if you caught this, but this is the only individual that he cites in the whole video. Surprisingly, it's the grand imam of Abu Dhabi, uh, Al-Azhar. The Grand Imam Al Azhar of, of, of Abu Dhabi that he went and, went and, and visited, and they signed the Global Pact of Friendship Across Religions. It was after he signed that pact with that Grand Imam in Abu Dhabi that they named a huge mosque after Mary, the mother of Christ. He referenced him in this video announcement. And what is this pact for the re education of the world's children? You remember, coronavirus is killing off the adults, the old people, the 60-somethings, or maybe 70-somethings, 80-somethings. These are the people they are killing. This whole end-time event we are witnessing is going to be about the younger generation because they believe the older ones are about to die off anyway. They want to re-educate you and I. They want us to begin to accept some of the belief systems that we never thought in our widest imagination that we would accept under normal circumstances. They want us to begin to accept things that, are, that were condemned by the Bible as evil and as bizarre. Pope Francis continues to shake things up in the Catholic Church. Yesterday, apparently, he was talking to a gay man in Chile and told him that you are gay doesn't matter. God made you like this and loves you like this. So will Catholics follow his... Who am I to judge that? That's the re-education program that is about to happen. That's what the man is going to do. And he is also focusing that on the so-called environmental thing that we we're talking about. They want to re-educate the people about religion, that all religions are good. That's the re-education. Who is going to be there in attendance? The leaders of all religious groups on earth. High-profile individuals in sports in entertainment, in politics, in every aspect of life have been invited to attend this massive global one-of-a-kind event in Rome, invited by the Pope. This is happening May 14, 2020. And guess what comes immediately after it? Immediately after it, this other particular event is going to happen. Let me read you something here. It says, on Wednesday, September 26, 2018, at the Peace Palace in The Hague, the Carnegie Foundation and the Elijah Interfaith Institute announced that a declaration of friendship across religions intending to foster peace is in the making. Okay, here's what comes after that. It says, 
prominent religious leaders of the various faiths in the world will be invited to sign the declaration at a historic summit at the Peace Palace in June 2020. This thing they want to sign is to activate the one world religion for the first time in history since we've been reading it in the Bible. And look at what Prophet Sundal, this Indian prophet, look at what he said about Pope Francis regarding the one world religion. Now I tell you some current news that is going to happen. Three years ago, the Lord showed me, which I have now made public, that the present Pope is the false prophet. Have you heard that? Now, and subsequently over the years, the signs of him being the false prophet mentioned in Revelation 13 are coming to pass one by one. This year, he has made an announcement. The announcement is the formation of one world religion. And an invitation has been issued to all top religious leaders on the world to gather together September 2020 in the city of Hague in Holland at a place called the Peace Palace to sign the covenant of one world religion. Now, I don't know why Prophet Sundar says September for the signing, but what I'm seeing in the document in front of me here is June 2020. And June actually makes a lot of sense because June comes immediately after the so-called pact for the re-education of the world's children, which Pope Francis is going to have in May. So the very next month, it makes sense that they're going to go over there to go and sign this thing, which is called Friendship Across Religions, which is actually activating the one world religion. Except if the date has been moved forward to September, I don't know, maybe that's why Professor Sundar called it September. But whichever one it is, whether it is June or September, the one world religion is activated in this very year. And now, let us connect some dots. Pope Francis is coming to have a program to sign a pact for the re-education of the world student to accept the system of the Antichrist, which is the New World Order, basically. After that, the one world religion will be signed into effect and that will become the first time that the regime of the Antichrist is taking official effect in our world. And we know that there is only one regime on earth, prominent one today that we know, that is at parallel with the New World Order. And that regime is that of Donald Trump, which explains why Pope Francis is very angry with Trump, never speaks well of him. He always criticizes Donald Trump. Never. He, they're not friends. Because the man is at parallel. He, whatever he's doing is at parallel with the dictates of the New World Order. And now, if the New World Order is actually beginning officially in June or September, according to uh, uh, Professor Sundar, how do you expect them to have Donald Trump come back to power again if Donald Trump is the only formidable force that is antagonistic to their new world order system. You see why I said in my previous video that the fight to get rid of Trump is completely valid and it is on a top gear right now as we speak. Even this whole corona is also part of what they want to use to humble and humiliate Donald Trump out of power. Let me explain that to you. Let me explain it to you. First of all, they started with the Mueller investigations, Russia collusion. It turned out the collusion was a delusion. They came up with Stormy Daniels. They came up with impeachment. There's nothing they have not done. None of it has worked. This man remains in power. These people are so afraid and so angry, especially the colonial powers of Europe, that Donald Trump is treading on grounds that no other American president had ever dared to tread on and which is actually doing things that will make them to lose all their colonial countries that they colonized in Africa which they have continued to rule over till this day by proxies. 
So these people are fidgeting. They are so they are so angry. They are on edge. These people want to do everything to bring Trump down. That's why if you look at all the narrative going on in the mainstream media as usual, you see that they've already started blaming Trump for the coronavirus, despite all the quick action he had taken. If you look at the American economy right now, you find that the American economy is headed towards a recession, more like, okay, God forbid, but that's where it's headed now. Because every, you know, they know that Trump had always been touting the strong economy that America has. Every time he makes a speech, that's the first thing he talks about. So now they want to humble him and they also want to disgrace him. I saw the president of France, Macron, the other day on the screen, making some very sweeping changes, destroying every aspect of life in France. You are blocking border, you are blocking, I mean like virtually nothing. It's like everybody should just stay indoors like a prisoner because of coronavirus. Because of coronavirus. And all these things they do is to make sure that Trump does the same thing. Before you know it, they will also come out and say, oh, martial law, like just the way Spain or whatever declared mandatory vaccination. They also expect Trump to do this. So the, everything they want him to do, they are doing it. And they make the whole world see it so that if they do it and Trump doesn't do it, the moment they report extra deaths in America, they say, ah, it's because he's not doing what Europeans are doing. And they're going to show the whole world that, oh, we did this and it worked. So they expect him to do the same thing. But I'm saying to Donald Trump, listen, do what works for Americans. Don't listen to them. Don't watch what they are doing. This virus is dangerous. It's a killer virus. But do what only works for Americans. You don't have to declare martial law. You don't have to begin to stop vehicles, people from traveling from you know, one state to another. Don't block interstate travels. Take your time and put measures in place to curtail and contain the virus. This is aimed at him. And so when the economy goes into recession, the next thing you're going to hear is, you see, we said it, America, you see, this man is incompetent from day one. He never wanted to do anything. In fact, he even denied it. He denied that the virus was real. And now look where we are. People are dying. Economy has crashed. Everything is down. How can you have this man as president? And then that's when you see the head of Hillary will now begin to rear off. Have you noticed that the two Democratic presidential hopefuls, Biden and Sanders, I said it in my previous video, two of them have indicated they are going to have females as their vice president. Did you see the recent publication now on Breitbart News? Whoopi Goldberg has now advised Biden, Whoopi Goldberg, right, from the, the, from the View, has advised Biden to pick Hillary Clinton as her vice president. In that Simpsons video that I showed in my previous video, there's a Simpsons video, you know the Simpsons, okay? The, the sitcom. They always make predictions. I detailed this in my previous video. They predicted the 9-11. They predicted that Disney was going to buy Fox. They predicted Donald Trump presidency. And in that prediction, they had a woman called Lisa who took over from Donald Trump around about 2020, from the way they put it. Now, this woman is busy calling her cabinet and saying, let's know what, where we are now in the, econo in the economy. And they say, oh, we are broke because of what Trump did. So it's almost, in other words, Trump bankrupted America. And that's almost what they are working the man into right now. So the moment they pick Hillary as vice presidential candidate, just know it deep down in your spirit that Hillary has become America's president. No two ways about that. And that Hillary you are looking at there is 100% in compliance with the new world order which is going to take effect between May and June, according to Pope Francis. You see the connection of all the things that is going on. That's why life is completely changing for everyone right now. And they are going to put more pressure and put more pressure and put more pressure until they make this man cave. But then for us who are Christians, this is the best time for us to begin to pray. It is time for us to pray for Donald Trump. If we don't pray for Donald Trump, mark my words, this Terrorism that has been declared on Christians in Nigeria, it will take another turn for the worse. 
This man is the only ray of hope we have today. And from the things that I see, from the dots I am connecting, the dark clouds are closing in on him at an unprecedented rate. And I feel like if we can rise up to pray, God will come and save him and keep him for us for at least another four years so that we can consolidate, so that he can also consolidate on the little gains that we have made to the point that in Nigeria today, people are afraid of Donald Trump, that they even know that there's somebody who is speaking for Christians in Nigeria. To the extent that today we now know that the Trump administration has put a bounty on the Boko Haram leader and has decided that they are going to get him whatever it takes, just like they got the Soleimani of Iran. Imagine that just shortly before they were supposed to come in because they've already created a, a global alliance against religious persecution and mentioned Nigeria in, the, in one of the places where they need to intervene. And right before they came, look at coronavirus everywhere. These people are fighting and this whole thing is all for the soul of Africa. I wish that Africans will understand this. That's why we created a campaign group for Donald Trump. It's called Africans for Trump 2020. I was shocked that I mentioned it briefly in my previous video and before you know it, so many people have registered. I'm asking you, if you have not registered, please try and register. We're still going to make another video, a proper video to announce it. We are going to be in every capital in Africa. We want to pray, not only pray, then call our peoples abroad. If you are in Africa, those of us in America, we will call around. We will visit people and talk to them about the, 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 the importance of casting our vote for this man and supporting him. It is very crucial, my people. I used to be so confident that nothing will happen to him. Now I have little fears and I have reasons to be afraid. And I think it is time for us to pray like we've never done before for Donald Trump. Because the evil clouds are closing in. Our world has changed. It has changed forever. And I, know I can only pray and hope that this thing is going to lead to a massive revival. So that those people who thought that God didn't mean anything. People who didn't think that God is all. Now their eyes are opening. They are waking up to the realities that the devil has been deceiving them. And now when you see what is happening around the world, nobody will tell you to run to God because the time is here. You read it in the book of Revelation. You were told it's going to happen many, many years to come. It's here right now and we are living it now. It's time to make a move. Pray with me. Pray with me that God will preserve this man and that he will keep the rest of us. Amen. Thank you.